a family friend just passed by, blew her horn, and came out to see, here I am, to tell you who I am. Um, my name is Indira Kuivalainen, um, slash Bursad. I born and grew here in Horstelling, two streets away. We moved here to this location when I was eight years old. Um, my life was here. I had a beautiful life growing up because of my parents. Um, my dad was always behind education, so education was a basic was a basis for us. Growing up, um, I migrated out of out of this this home here when I was 18 years old. Migrated to Europe. That path took me all the way to Finland, in Scandinavia. And there I progressed with my life, being a registered nurse, onwards to become a medical doctor. And back and forth here, mom is still here. So I always come back, come back to the society, come back to our village and give back what I can to our village. And our city, our healthcare center. I go back there and that's what I usually do when I come here, even bumping for two, three hours, two, three weeks. Um, I'm really, really extremely happy to see what's going on when I came here in our villages, the way things, the way Guyana has developed, the investments that has opening up, which I'm also um, joining in and doing something future coming back because home is always home. I'm not saying that, that this is always home because I come back to home and I give back to home. My dad was very liberal and he taught me at the age of 14. I was a wild one because I wanted to have speed. So I was, he taught me to ride motorcycle. I was the only girl around riding motorcycle. And uh, I was, I was, I'm still well known for the girl who rode the motorcycle around here. I met my husband at a wedding and I met in the squatting area. And he was touring, he's from Finland, he was touring around the, um, touring around the Caribbean. He had just finished uh, his army and he saved up money. He wanted to come to South America. So it must have been fate that I was working there and I met him and I thought that he was working for fisheries and he wanted me to do a job. And after talking with him, I brought him home here and I said, hey, this is where I'm living. If you want, more, if you want to uh, make a sign to my father, you can consult. And my mom was like, oh my God, why did she bring this person here? But because my family was so liberal, I, was, I just brought him in. And then we started corresponding for like two, three years. And then he came back. And then we talked about moving together and building something and making a career. And that is when I moved with him to Finland. And at the age of 20, I went back to school there and um, become a registered nurse. I wanted more and then I studied and become a doctor. I come back, I go to Georgetown Hospital and I do a one day just to see what the healthcare system is about there, uh, sort of charity work. Just for free, I go back every time and I just go and say, I do a day, I make arrangements from over there so I can come and do a day work and do a 14 hours day to see what I can do. And I have a daughter who is, um, she's 30 years old and she's, she's, a, she's a nurse also, but uh, like I said, she did a paper in her. She counted the 20 times that in her life that she came back here because I always say, this is base, this is home, and you must know where you come from. So she, even the last time she came, she came to spend one month with mom, just to be one and one with mom. She said, when mom die, I'm not coming here, but I wanna come when she's alive so I can hear about her and write about her. So I bring her back, I send her back, I bring her back until she's coming back herself. She got married here. We had a wedding here because she wanted to have the, she wanted to go back to the roots. She speaks English, she speaks Finnish, which is the language there. And she <laughs> told me that I rob her of her Guyanese language. <laughs> 
which she now has called me as an adult. She called me on the phone and she would say, Gyal, what do you do? <laughs> not knowing she cannot call me Gyal because I'm her mom, but I do not, I do not, uh, I do not correct her because with her accent it comes out so sweet. <laughs> When I called her here and I told her that I'm here with mom, I said, I'm here safe. She said, girl, you're proper happy you're there with your mama. <laughs> because she, think, she thinks that this language should not die out. And she wants to learn it so much that she can continue to speak the dialect of our home. Fortunately, uh, fortunately and unfortunately for me, my father always spoke English with me. So I had in correct English as growing up. Dad do not speak the local language with me. And even me have um, difficulty in understanding or even saying the wrong word because as a child growing up in my family, we, I always speak English. And mom is, uh, mommy is ma for everybody, but she's mommy for me. Living 35 years out of here, going back and forth. I remember faces, but I don't remember names to put to the face. Or then I may remember a name and not remember the face. And his father was a photographer. So it, was, it ran in the, it was, his father had the studio and everything that he prints his own pictures. So he had the photography going and then dad did it. And when dad did it, I took it up. And growing up for me, that was my passport to freedom. And having the motorcycle, I would just, I would go villages and villages and uh, at that, those days you don't have cell phones. So mom doesn't know to call me and say, well, where are you right now? If I leave in the morning, I'll be back before the sun sets. So, you know, that was my freedom. <laughs> Growing up, I remember going down to Tongue. I used to drive around. I drive in places that I have no fear of. I used to go through Tiger Bay. I was like, what is this Tiger Bay? I got to go through this place. And I would ride that motorcycle around there and I come to the park to, uh, to Starbuck Market, a park bike. And I remember there was an African, uh, African guy and his woman. She was big and she had a big motorcycle. And she looked at me and she said, you riding a motorcycle? I don't know a girl who rides a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know where to park that bike. So I said to her, you know what? I said, mom, I'm gonna park this bike here <laughs> beside your bike because I know nobody's gonna take anything out from my bike once your bike is there. <laughs> and she will say to the guys, you look at this bike properly. When this girl come around here, you know this bike is safe here. And that was a safe haven for me that every time I go around town, I would go and park that bike beside her bike. May, I may not see her, but I park a bike and I know that my bike is safe. And dad would say, how the hell you go around all over town and leave this bike and come back in one piece? But I had my places. <laughs> the, the clutch was broken and I rode. And I didn't want dad to know. And I, was, I had no idea where I was going, but I ended up behind prison. Remember that prison? Yeah, please. And I was riding there and I saw this, this shack and this guy's repairing motorcycle. And you know the, the, the tension we have between the Africans and the Indians, you know, you don't have nothing to do with you, you're African, I already have a picture, I have a real picture about you now. So I drove in there, that bike, and I say to these guys who are down there, I said, listen, this clutch is broken and I don't know how to drive this bike with a clutch. And they look at me and they say, you bring that bike here. And I said, yes, I'm going to walk back to Regent Street. My cousin is working there and I'll get money from her. And when I come back, <laughs> then you guys going to fix this clutch for me. That was the kind of person I was. So I leave that bike there and I walk to Regent Street, collect the money, I think it was $300, for my cousin, borrow it and come back. That day, my father chose to drive through that street <laughs> and saw that bike. <laughs> what is his motorcycle doing in Camp Street next to the, the, the prisoner and with a guy of six black guys there and his bike there? What kind of bike? It's a Yamaha. It's a Yamaha. And I was walking, but my father, the kind of a person that if, if I think it was another family, he would have beat the crap out of me. <laughs> he take that bike. He drove away and leave me. He drove away and come home and leave me to sort that out. 
I got that clutch fixed and I came home. <laughs> and he just said to me that, what was that bike doing in Cam, in Cam Street next to the prison? What happened? And then I said, Dad, the clutch was broken and I can't drive it without the clutch. I don't know how to roll it and buy, drive it without a clutch. He said, did you understand the danger you were in? And then I said, Dad, I wasn't afraid. I talked to these guys. They talked to me and they said they'll fix it for $300. And I walk back and I get. This is something I teach to my nieces and nephews. I said, you go and you see somebody, you do not make judgment over people. You talk to them, you will get in. I told them, I go in, in Georgetown Market, I always walk through that front gate. And I hail everybody there. <laughs> I hail everybody there. Before, I said the one thing I miss out growing up as a girl, I don't get this, that, you know, the boys will trouble you. They will sip you. I never get that. I miss out on that because I'm the first one who says something that they don't even, they left us. Oh, okay, we can't tell the one not. We can't trouble the one. <laughs> and when my daughter came here, she's walking down the road and the boys were like, Psst, and she stopped and she asked them, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with your mouth? <laughs> she, she didn't know what it means. So she stopped and then the boys was like, damn. This is Eno's daughter. We can't even do nothing. We can't even travel she. Because she always come up and she said, hey, you know my mom? I am Eno's daughter. And she, so they don't, she, she missed out. I told her, you do not say anything. You just walk and let them boys hear what they tell you. Hear the way the courtmanship starts here. And she was like, I have to say something, mommy. I have to say something. She was in the bus and the boy showed her a kiss. She said, wait, wait, let me open the window. Mm -hmm. Kiitos tästä päivä kaikille. Ihana päivä teille. Hyvä jatko. Koko poruka tässä. <laughs> that is what I said. Thank you for this wonderful day. Have a blessed day, you all. And I said, have a blessed and thank you for the whole crew here. <laughs>